Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. I uh, hope all is going well in your life. Um, you know, we look at the present condition of the world and um, it makes you wonder, you know, what people think. To me, people seem crazy or insane. We're going to take a look at why. Um, of course, the falling away has happened. When has it sort of happened? Why has it happened? And what could you do about it? What, how can you do your part? And, and making sure you're walking with God as well as um, being prepared to give your testimony and, and the reason why you know that you have salvation. If you're not saved, get saved on the blood of Jesus Christ. 100% proof of salvation is only, only known when you believe on the blood for the forgiveness of your sins. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of perfection. And we are in need of a Savior. I admit that you're a sinner. Repent, which means to turn away from the world to the Lord and accept the, the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus died on a cross, rose from the dead three days later, as only God could do. And then um, his blood, all of it, every drop was shed to forgive you for your sins. Once saved, always saved, past, present, future sins, all forgiven, all in one shot. So we're going to take a look at the book of Amos. And we're going to take a look at... Um, verse 11 Behold the days come, saith the Lord God that I will send a famine in the land not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water but of hearing the words of the Lord So traditionally we always think about a, you know, a famine in the world of you know, loss of food or loss of substance water spoiling and not being good and causes death certainly that's the physical world that we live in but jesus is talking about the spiritual word of god so it's an important it's important i think in our present day and age because it speaks to volumes of the fact that most people in the apostate churches and many christians who claim to be christians do not read the word of god do not spend the time in the book and it makes you wonder you know why you know, it's sad, right? It's I think that the spiritual famine, that's what I'm going to call it, started in 1855 in England um, with the, the publishing of the uh, new version of the Bible, the new revised version. In 1901, we got the ASV in America. And I think that began, um, and I've often said it started about 1900. Um, but ever since then, this famine has grown, spiritually speaking. And... What is missing is is plural the words of God of, of God of of the Lord in people's lives, and so you know I really don't understand you know understand that. So we, we suffer from a spiritual famine today. Let's take a look. Um, I will go over to John eight forty seven. In the Bible reads he. That is of God, heareth God's words. He therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. So, you know, you should be interested in reading the Bible as a Christian. You're of God. You're not of the world. You know, the Bible will put you on the right path. The walk with God is important. So you, if you're not reading the Bible, you know, especially as a Christian, you probably, probably have died, okay, your physical death, or... You're completely dying inside spiritually. You're falling away. Well, you know, you're now you're saved, right? You're not, I'm not talking about damned. I'm talking about you're falling into things of the world that will take you away from the Lord. And you're not serving the Lord. You're, you know, you're turning into your fleshly nature, um, away from the spiritual nature that we were given when we were we were born again in the second birth, the spiritual baptism that we received. It's very important as a Christian to walk. And, um, you know, we should realize that um, it's important for those that are unsaved. You know, it's important to read the Bible once you are saved. So pick up that book. Right, let's take a look at another verse. Let's go over to same chapter, John 14, and we'll go 20, we'll go 23. Um, and the Bible reads here. 
John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So, if you love the Lord, you're going to keep his words. You're going to read his words. In order to keep them, you have to read them. Second Timothy 2, 15, Study to show thyself approved to work, but need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Read your Bible. Definitely read your Bible. Um... You know, very important to get into the Word of God here, especially in these last days. Um, let's take a look at, at Hebrews chapter 4, 12, and 13. And again, you can stop the video and, and you know, catch up. And um, the Bible reads at Hebrews 4 and verse 12, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, that's Ephesians 6.17, you can see that. Piercing even to the div dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. All right, so what does it mean for the word of God it is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword? Very, You know, it's very, very interesting. Um, this verse should be memorized if you have the chance to do it. Um but he is speaking of the written, spoken word of God. Um, not the living word of God, at John 1.1. 1, 1. Um, he speaks of the scriptures as living at John 6.63. And um, the word of God is attributed with the omnipresent, omni, omniscience and Godhead. You know, it's, it, the word of God is everywhere. Jesus was the word of God before the beginning of time. And... Um, it's important to get into that word of God because it can cut you. You know, if you follow the word and word of God, then it's it's a blessing, right? It's powerful, but it also is very sharp because it's going to point out your flaws. It's going to it's going to make you realize that you're not doing what you should be doing for others. So it's it's, it's definitely going to cut you as well as um, be a blessing. Uh, but the, what's interesting is the sword is the word of God. If you look at you know you're supposed to grab your sword, and your belt, and your breastplate, and your helmet. Um, you know, the sword is the word of God in that equation um, as well. The word discerner um, is an interesting word. It's a Greek word for critic. Um, the scholars subject the Bible to, to higher uh, and lower criticisms. You know, these scholars think that it's wrong. You know, they want to correct it all the time. Um, but really, this book will critique the scholars and will... And that's how it's another way. It's a double-edged sword. If you believe you're smarter than it, you read it, you won't have understanding, and it will cut you as well. You can't find salvation, even if you wanted to, unless you turn to the Lord and the, and the grace that's given to us by, the, by his blood. And believe that, you need a, uh, believe that you need a Savior. So I hope this was a good video. Just wanted to go through uh, some of these verses that I found intriguing and interesting about we're in these last times where humanity does not seem to want or need God. And it's a shame. And I think the reason that the church has fallen into the condition that it is today as apostate and cults and, and not not looking towards the Lord and trying to serve the Lord or not even given true salvation is one, you know, it could be on purpose. But two, there are a lot of innocent people that do not pick up and read the word of God. I, I think if many would read the Bible and learn to rightly divide like dispensationalism and read it the right way <clears throat> and not pick and choose, you know, like I'm just going to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and stop. Uh, I'm not going to read the rest of the Bible after Acts. I think that um, you know, the world would be a better place. The other thing I think is, he. I think Paul wrote Hebrews. Um, you know, a lot of people don't agree with that, but I think I think that that's the case, and I think Hebrews may have been the first book that Paul wrote um, because it would make sense um, that it was written um, because this book has a lot of application to the Christian Christian age. Um, you know, it's certainly a book that you should read. Um, I think it has dual application a lot of times as well to future time periods uh, with the Jews. But I do think it, it is a book that Paul wrote, and I think it was his first book he wrote before Acts, and it would make sense because it, you know, Hebrews is really addressed to the Jews, but it's also Paul who's who's saved at that time. And you see that theme of, of Christianity and the church in it before um, 
you know, Acts comes along and everyone else agrees with Paul and the mystery is given unto him. So that's my opinion. Uh, I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, again, a lot of people will refute what I said and that's okay. Um, God bless. Have a great day.